Hey everyone, welcome to this weekly Sidereal Astrology Forecast for the week of April 24th through the 30th of 2023. Alright, so this week we have, um, well, the continuation of the solar eclipse, first of all. We had a solar eclipse uh, last uh, week around Wednesday, Thursday, and so we are in the first quarter moon of this eclipse cycle, and that usually tends towards having to challenge ourselves and really uh, implement the energies that just started out of the uh, eclipse. So uh, the new beginnings were last week, but it's a really good week to challenge ourselves, integrate, implement, um, carry and move this energy forward uh, this week and challenge ourselves to do so. Um, also, uh, quite important as well, Mars is forming a couple of aspects. You know, Mars is the slowest of the fast movers, and so he doesn't form as many aspects as the others. Um, so when he does, it's quite important. And in this case, Mars will be squaring up to healing Chiron on Thursday and sextiling uh, revolutionary innovative Uranus on Saturday. So the uh, Thursday really good for healing. Um, the squares to Chiron can bring up some wounds, some things that can be healed with Mars. It could be matters pertaining to our confidence or assertiveness or independence that we can um, do some healing with. And then Saturday, just a bit of an opening for some new and different energy, a bit of spontaneity, maybe just a little bit more of a connection to our true selves, uh, which can be great to implement as well. All right, so let's go and take a look at all of this here in more detail when we return. Alrighty, so here is the sky for this week. We're going to look at this for each day of the week, starting first with Monday, April 24th. And as you can see here, we are using the visible sky on this channel, which is very different from mainstream astrology. You will notice that a lot of the signs are different, like I'm about to say that the sun is in Aries, but you might be expecting it to be in Taurus. And so if that is the case, definitely check out the link down below for more information on using the visible sky, because again, it is different from mainstream astrology, and it's called true sidereal astrology. Okay, so a little bit of a recap to see where everything is coming into this week. Uh, last week, we had that solar eclipse around the Wednesday-Thursday time period. Now the um, we'll be in the first quarter, the... Uh, the square between the sun and moon in that cycle. Uh, but the sun is now uh, well set in Aries. There was that shift just after the solar eclipse. So since around uh, Thursday of last week, the sun was in uh, was starting to go into Aries. And so it is for almost the month. Aries is a smaller constellation, so it's not quite the full month. But um, for almost the next month now, really good to be focused on the more initiating and assertive qualities of life. Uh, Aries is all about viewing life through the lens of taking initiative and being proactive. And so anything in our lives that can be um, taken initiative with, maybe require a little more assertiveness, maybe a little more action or initiative on our part, some of that proactivity, really good to focus on this time of the year. And uh, it really is the beginning of the zodiac year uh, here with the sun in the first first constellation of Aries since around, uh, was it about Friday, I believe, uh, of last week. All right, so that's still going on. Mercury is still retrograde, and he's in Aries as well. And so Mercury retrogrades are a really good time to kind of redo things and approach life a little bit differently. And in Aries, again, approaching things a little differently with how we're asserting ourselves or being proactive in our lives. Uh, but particularly with Mercury, it can deal a lot with how we're communicating. There has been already for the past many weeks more of a fiery nature to our communications and um, how we're thinking about things. And that's still going to certainly continue with Mercury still here and Mars still in Gemini, we'll talk about. But, but to do this kind of stuff, this cerebral, mental, communicative stuff, and even daily stuff, just with a little bit more flexibility, because the, the, the retrogrades do tend towards a little bit more of an inward process. Now, generally, we have a lot of the, all of the planets, you know, uh, moving forward, except for Mercury at the moment. Um, Pluto will go retrograde next week. But, um, but there's a lot of forward movement in general, but just specifically with, you know, things we've been thinking about, correspondence, 
and again some of these daily activities just good to still be a bit flexible with go back and reduce some things uh, good time for that um, kind of re redoing and such uh, Venus is well set in Taurus so still good time to be enjoying the more natural or material worlds and so a good meal or some relaxation or nature or things like this can be very enjoyable and connecting in our relationships uh, through these things uh, can be great as well and just uh, a little bit more self-reliance a little bit more grounded a little bit more steady and uh, you know with that inner strength when it comes to those relationships how are relating with others can be quite grounded can be quite um, steady and um, yeah and grounded in that sense so that's still going on with relationships with Venus there Mars in Aries there is that fire again and excuse me, Mars and Gemini. And so Gemini is all about the cerebral and communicative process. So if there is any of that initiative you do want to take, some of that fire energy you do want to implement, one of the great areas of doing that with is learning, gaining information, exchanging with others, communication, business trade, connecting with peers, short distance travel, basically anything that's about synergizing, uh, either internally or externally in our life. There's certainly a lot of Fire to do so. All right, so that's the placements. They're all, you know, very staggered in one sign after the next. Uh, these are the um, early signs, the first three signs of the zodiac. So a lot of this is about getting things, you know, um, started in the energies of life, working with the more personal energies of life as well. As you can see, you know, self and initiative with Aries and self-reliance and resourcefulness with Taurus and learning and communication with Gemini. These are very personal and very subjective, very intrinsic and personal um, elements of life. And so great to be doing these kinds of things, maybe personal development and stuff, uh, developing the self, um, things that require the self, you know, things like this is, is definitely the theme. All right, but uh, let's go and take this uh, one day at a time here, uh, looking at uh, the week here. So Monday, we do have the moon uh, going from Taurus into Gemini. And so, uh, the weekend was really good for some of that grounding energy of Taurus. But the early part of the week, um, by late Monday and really all day Tuesday and early Wednesday, there's a main theme around that Gemini. And so again, a great time to be learning, using our minds, maybe some of that communication and such. Um, and we do have some sextiles. Sextiles are just a bit of an opening, nothing major really, but uh, nice to utilize them. And with Mercury still sextiling Mars from last Sunday, maybe a bit of that fire again available. The sun sextiling Saturn gives us some groundedness or some productivity or discipline or responsibility that we can implement if we choose to. And so that's quite nice to see. And Venus will be sextiling Chiron. And it's really, I think, emphasizing that this is a great week for healing, especially in the context of that fiery side of ourself. And that's mainly because Mars will be squaring up to Chiron all week, pretty much, and going exact here on the uh, Thursday time period. So as we do get closer to that Thursday time period, um, first of all, you know, we will be in that first quarter moon. And so it is really good to, again, challenge ourselves. This is the tire meets the road. This is the integration of the lunar month to challenge ourselves to move forward. Whatever new perspectives or quite literal new things that have come into our life since around midweek last week. Now to do so, I think a great way of doing this will be to perhaps do some of that healing and specifically with that fiery side. Because you see, we've had a lot of um, energy in Pisces leading up to that solar eclipse. And so there was a lot being resolved with our soul connection and our inner self and inner feelings and spirituality, just reconnecting with that soul. But by now this week, you know, there is definitely a lot more in the world, integrated, self-oriented, movement-oriented kind of energy. And so anything that is healing in, on that level, I think is a great week to challenge ourselves with any healing in regards to confidence, uh, assertiveness, that proactive or initiating side, right? Anything like that. And so any intentions around that is really good. It might be a bit challenging to maybe do some of those fiery or initiating things, but only because there would be some sort of inhibition, some sort of wound, some sort of trauma, something that needs to be healed. But by doing so, can be extremely healing and therapeutic. So great week to do that fiery initiating stuff and in the process feeling quite healed 
and rejuvenated. And this is especially the case coming off of that square once we are waning off that square, separating off that square, uh, which will be mostly Friday and onwards, we'll likely start to feel more of that post-healed energy. And so maybe feeling a bit rejuvenated, maybe a bit confident and assertive as you know some of that stuff has likely been reintegrated and healed as a result of this uh, square to Chiron. Okay, and uh, by this point, uh, once we do get to that late Wednesday and Thursday time period, even early Friday, we'll have the moon in Cancer. And so it's already a good middle, very middle part of the week for self-care, self-nurturance, a bit of that protectiveness, creating a safe and secure environment for ourselves and others. Um, you know, maybe spending some time at home or with family, even connecting to those close to us on an emotional level and just, you know, accessing a bit of that protective side. Um, for those close to us and ourselves as well. So so that's great there. But once we do get into the weekend and again out of this kind of healing energy, uh, we do start to feel a bit of the, again, maybe easier to do some of that, you know, less emotional energy or less inward energy and certainly more outward energy. Because by this point, uh, we will start to enter into the gibbous phase of the lunar cycle. And so this is where the sun and moon start to trine each other. And in this case, they'll both be in fire signs. So of course, that's sun and Aries. Uh, with the initiative, but uh, the moon in Leo for the whole weekend, late Friday through Saturday and Sunday. So perhaps a little bit easier to express ourselves, probably feeling a little bit of a need to have some fun, some playfulness, some creative energy, things like this uh, can be great. Letting out some of that passion, love, self-expression, connecting to the things and people close to our hearts uh, can be a great way of working with this weekend. But in addition to that, we have this nice sextile. So that Mars that maybe was a bit challenged with the healing side of things earlier in the week then gets not a major support, but an opening to express itself easier. And that's Mars sextiling revolutionary and free, you know, very free spirited uh, individualistic Uranus. And so it could be quite easy to, again, let out some of that confidence or assertiveness that might just feel a little bit more like our true self coming out. Um, so a little bit easier for that individual self-expression to let out our uniqueness, un our unorthodoxy, right? Our individual selves and, um, and anything on that level, I think is great to set intentions with. It probably will require some intentions because again, it's just a sextile. So it's just a bit of an opening there, but certainly supported collectively to do so. So yeah, individual self-expression, also anything that involves change um, we're just usually a little more open to change with you know easier aspects to uranus uh, again letting out that true self maybe revolutionizing things a little bit in our life a little bit of that um, you know healthful rebellion or healthful what is it you know change revolution um, mixing things up getting outside of our comfort zone a little bit right can be very supportive uh, with that so great weekend for that stuff and the energy is just generally easier over the weekend as we do have that um, supportive phase of the cycle, the moon in Leo, and uh, just that minor sex dial up to Uranus. All right, everyone, so that is the week in a nutshell. Most important thing is, I think, integrating the solar eclipse that started last week, midweek, um, really challenging ourselves, particularly the early to middle part of the week to do so, carry that energy forward, move it forward, um, and maybe some healing to facilitate that process at least in the context of anything relating to that fiery side or that you know, sense of self, confidence, you know, things of that nature. But by the, you know, once we lift off out of that by the weekend, um, then definitely feeling the post healed energy and a bit easier there for letting out some of that fire uh, with that sextile to Uranus. But again, also just because we'll be slowly building some of that momentum in the lunar cycle by then, and we'll be having that uh, lunar eclipse next week, marking the halfway point or the highest energy point of the lunar month. All right, so everyone have a fantastic week. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click the like button if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not yet signed up for MTZ Insiders, it is a free newsletter. We do get these videos released first before YouTube and extra content not normally released on YouTube. There's a link to sign up down below for that if you haven't yet. But again, have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you all next time for the next astrology forecast. Take care.